If you haven't noticed, basically it's all about learning something new. And learning is kind of fun when it's something you want to learn about. If you've been here for a bit or maybe been following me on other channels, you seen a lot of the edits I've been doing of basically 90s era hip hop instrumentals. It's my favorite era of hip hop. It's my favorite era of like production in general, whether it's hip hop or dance or pop or just a lot of things happen. It's kind of the golden age of technology meets music and creativity, really. Um, it's always multiple golden ages. It's not like it was the only one. But I feel like when I hear instrumentals from that era, I always feel like this is really like similar to drum and bass, like musically and arrangement. I don't hear fly. You don't want to learn about sampling. There's like a, a relationship that I hear. I mean, if you go back to old jungle and stuff, like a lot of it was influenced by hip hop in a way from sampling and production methods. But when I make jungle, I made jungle from the hip hop state of mind. Right. And that's how I was able to create something unique and different. I didn't approach jungle like a junglist. I wasn't making jungle. I was making hip hop at 160, at 170. And then here we are 2024 or whatever year you're watching this video and things are similar, but different. You know, technology changes. Practices are similar, the same. The end result is good music that people like listening to. And I feel like there's a lot of good music that happened in that era. And by taking the time to recreate it, and learn those practices, I can apply those methods to my own music. So when I want to make something myself, I know like, all right, I'm going to go find this song and then I'm going to cut it up and piece it together like this. And here are these methods I can use with the technology that I have or using, you know, recreations of the technology and methods of back in the day to get a similar sound. And basically it's all about learning something new. Cause in this, on this channel, if you haven't noticed, if this is your first time, welcome. And if you've been here for a while, you know the drill, it's all about learning. And learning is kind of fun when it's something you want to learn about. So if this is something you want to learn about, keep watching. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's get going. This is boring enough. Probably is it, this is interesting. You like, see, anyway. So here we go in the DAW. I always get questions what's wrong. I'm going to say it's Studio One. Um, but this is a project for the last edit I put together, which was Keep It Real by Milkbone. One hit wonder. Really sick beat. It kind of has everything I like about that era of hip hop and instrumentals, where it's just like, it's pretty simple but it's the character you get from really pitching down a sample and like all the artifacts you would get from the MPC or the Akai or like whatever's being used, SP-1200 and things. And like that kind of grittiness, but punchiness, like it's kind of how I've described like me wanting my music a little pushed and not necessarily clinical and clean, but like almost to the point of breaking. It's clean, but it's dirty. You know, it's, it's that kind of feeling. Like, you know, when you hear it, it just has a feel and a flow that like, I like to capture in my music. Like there's a humanness to it. There's like, there's an ebb and a flow. It's not really like tight on the grid. There's there's some push and pull. It makes you want to bob your head, not just go, ooh, this is nice, but just like, mm, you know, like it's one of those. So I don't know if I captured that, but like <laughs> to recontextualize it into drum and bass, I came up with this. Keep it real. Keep it real. It's like a lot of these edits more or less are just like DJ tools in a way. It's like something to put in my sets that like sounds cool. <laughs> it has a good vibe. Like in this case, it's kind of a simple straight, like a straightforward sample recreation, loop recreate, whatever. And then breaks a little bass line that kind of recreates the original bass line. It's all about just taking what's there and then putting it in a different context and trying to keep the original vibe so first thing I would do after just deciding what track I want to rework is looking for the original samples and the best way or usually the easiest way, easiest and best way is like going who sample.com. If you haven't been there, super good resource for finding who sampled what. I mean, that's the whole point. So when you open up the page, it will show you, you know, the song once you find it, if it's there, a um, bunch of info about it, that kind of thing but it'll tell you 
the samples within it. And this is all like user um, input. So someone went and was like, yo, this sample's in here. It starts at this time. It'll tell you what else, what other songs sampled it or used it, you know, remixes, things like that. And then it tries to sell you stuff at the bottom. Ignore that or don't. So if I click like one of these samples, open up another page and it'll show you how it's related. So if you click the original, it's like, all right, sample starts at, you know, five seconds, click that. So this is for the piano, because I've already listened to it. Now, if you click, you know, timestamps of what it's sampled, then it's going to show you that. And each kind of little chop. And like where they lie. So in this case, it shows you kind of every little chop, which is nice because now all I have to do is click like watch on YouTube, you know, open up the actual thing and then YouTube MP3. We all know it. We all use it. YouTube MP3. Um, or if you want to take it a step further, you can. And I do this from a lot of times. I look for the actual tune and then, you know, type in like lossless. Usually flack is a good one because then you find like the master of it, not a YouTube rip. So you don't have to worry about YouTube compression and stuff. And you will find it either legally or illegally, but this is more for practice. I'm not going to, you know, like it is what it is. We've all pirated FL studio once or twice, but the point is, you know what you're sampling, who sampled is how you do that. Now, some tunes you can just find the actual sample on YouTube. So like for the vocals, I just like I ain't about to sit back found the <laughs> found the acapella on here. It's pretty clean. So I just took that. And then in this case, someone already recreated the sample and uploaded it to YouTube. It's a bit different. They recreated it, but doesn't have like the same kind of character that the original tune has. is that um and i forget how because there's the other like dana dana sample in there i think i just took that out of the original song so if we go yeah i took that little four bar loop and just dropped it in i didn't need to do anything else so i did try a couple other things you know like ai splitting and like isotope rx and stuff like that and like if you can't find the original tune to sample or like a clean way to get it or you just kind of feel like it because it's fun um ai is a good way to kind of break up stuff a lot of dolls come with it now comes in handy it's not the cleanest but once you start like layering other stuff and you kind of cover up the artifacts but it's not like back in the day when you had to you know find the instrumental and then find the real track and then like line it up over and then flip the polarity of one um, so it just like isolated the vocal. You remember doing that back in the day? Technology, man. Anyway, so once I do that, I usually try and like once I get all the material, I go in and try and recreate the sample. And in this case, I'm not going to like do it. I'm just going to show you that I did it. You know what I mean? So you can see right here, piano loop. And so a couple things I usually have to do with this is like processing because like dry, it sounds like it just doesn't really work, you know, like with mixing anything, you kind of want things to tonally match. My drums are going to be really like clear and punchy. And then I just have like, a, you know, like <laughs> I want to make it sound a bit rich. So that's what the, where all the EQ and processing comes in. So this is kind of recreating it. Plus there's a lot of timing things with how fast drum and bass is. Like you want to be precise with your timing. Otherwise it just doesn't really sound good. You know what I mean? And precise isn't like dead on the grid. It just means things line up in a pleasing way. You want it to work together. You want the feel to be together. Some of the stuff just isn't on the grid. Like kicks and snares are always on the grid. And any like slice that hits at the same time as a kick or a snare is dead on. Stuff in the middle, not so much. Then we what we have the horn loop, you know, the minute. Just doing its own thing. 
Yeah. And then that's kind of the basis of the tune is plus you have the bass line. And to be fair, that's kind of it. Like, I just like, you know, rest of the owl, you know what I mean? Like, without going into extra detail, like, it's kind of self-explanatory. Like, I'm just recreating an instrumental at a different tempo, more or less, and then getting things to fit together, which is your standard mix job, you know? Um, anything else kind of creatively is really up to you. Like, if I wanted to go a step further, then I'd get sort of into, you know, remix territory of making the sample do something else. Or maybe grabbing the original source material of the sample, like the piano piece, and grabbing something else from there and, you know, incorporating that in. Um, but in this case, straightforward, find the sample, recreate the loop. Um, or if I keep saying find the sample, better way to say it, find the original source of the sample, then recreate the loop that, you know, it's like, it's a yo dog version of sampling versus I sample the sample, the sample. Yeah. A lot of rambling, but I know you get what I'm saying. The big benefit to this all is that I'm recreating the sample, you know, figuring out, okay, here's the source material. I'm hearing what they did to it. And I'm trying to step-by-step step recreate that. So it could just be as simple as chopping each chord or each piano thing and then just lining it up rhythmically. So I take like the original song up here and then I just take all the little chops and try, you know, line them up to get a feel. Or if it's more like hands-on and like, all right, I've taken this little piece, I'm taking this little piece and I'm rearranging that, I'm putting it there and I'm fading it in this way. And it's like, but it's all just recreating what you hear in a really kind of simplistic way. Like it's not really sound design anything. It's more or less just like creating the pieces of a puzzle and then rearranging. And doing that practice over and over helps me figure out what I wanna do when I'm just searching to make my own original music, which is built from the same process of finding some good source material, recontextualizing it, making a new melody or something out of it and then putting it in my own tune. The practice is similar, but because I'm recreating something that's already been done, I'm kind of learning the methods that someone else would take. Like that practice of learning what someone else does, someone else does and multiple different methods is what's going to come together and make you figure out what your method is. Now, when I sit down, I have a good song, to use a source material and I want to make something out of it. I have all these different ways that I know of and can experiment with to create something new out of that. And I do it so often that it doesn't come to like, all right, what should I do? Should I like reverse this or should I, I can just hear it and I sort of know what to do because it just kind of becomes second nature. And if you do that enough, it can become second nature to you too. Basically go out there and recreate some stuff. And if you do it enough, you'll know how to do it on your own for your own reasons. Yeah. Anyway, comments as usual, let me know. Um, Patreon's down in the description. Hook your boy up. Um, later.